Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and I've got a question from Chris which has come through on the Ask Skill Builder Help Desk. This Chris has got this damp patch on his ceiling. This is a bay window. Well, actually, there's two damp patches there, aren't there? And that one along there is actually just where the join of the plasterboard is, I think. But the problem with damp is that it can come in one place and appear at the next, especially if you've got something like foil backed plasterboard there and that stops it coming through and it often come through in a down lighter or somewhere else because that's the only place it can find an escape route. So let's have a look next. What have we got? This is the outside of Chris's house and it's a new build. It's about 13 years old. So we call that a new build. And um, he said that he's had the flashing checked by a roofer. And the roofer says there's nothing at all wrong with the flashing. Can't be the flashing that's causing the problem. Well, these are what we call cavity trays. The reason that we've got these kind of steps like this all in single pieces is because each one of those bits of lead flashing is attached to a cavity tray. And the idea of the cavity tray is that if there's any water that comes down inside the cavity, it's collected on the cavity tray and then it's taken to the outside where it can be safely taken away. Okay, so if we look at this top piece of lead flashing, let's assume that when they did this, they put a nice cavity tray in across there so that if there's any leaks around that window, any driving rain coming in, it will be taken inside the cavity through the mortar joints. It will be ejected to the outside through what we call weep vents. Now, if you've got a lead flashing going in there and you've got a cavity tray going up there, you would expect to see the weep vents in this position here, just above the lead flashing. And I can't see any there, but what I can see is little weep vents or little bits of holes somebody's put in there, a little bit of pipe, I don't know what they are, but. They're not weep vents as I understand them, as I recognise them, but they are there. Okay, so they're drains. One, two, three, four. So we've got plenty of weep vents there. But do you know what? Looking at the condition of this brickwork and the way it is compared to the brickwork above, I think somebody's been playing around here. I think somebody's had this out at some point and they've had a go at fixing it. You can see a bit of a smudge there and the mortar line here isn't brilliant, is it? So it could well be that somebody's already taken those bricks out. They've already poked a bit of damp up behind there, and that's where they're weeping it from. But that doesn't work, does it? Because if there's any water that gets past there, if it's entering here or here, where's it gonna drain to? It's gotta to come to the end of this piece of flashing and then it's got to drop over into the cavity. And if it's into the cavity, it's going to drop down here. Let's just have a look at this. This is a continuous bit. Well, it's not even a continuous bit of lead flashing, actually. It's got joins in it. So unless there's a cavity tray under that, there is a possibility that if any water gets in there and it drips down there, it could finish up dripping into the thing. So I'm not 100% convinced that this is a good job, you know, that as I say, I think that brick, all those bricks there, I think have been removed at some point and somebody's done a bit of a repair on it. Okay, fine, if that repair works, nothing wrong with that. So then we look at the cavity trays and the way that the cavity trays are supposed to work is that as the water enters the brickwork through the perp joints or through the porous bricks, it drips down, it's caught by this cavity tray, that cavity tray drops it onto the one below and the one below and it cascades down. Can't see it very well because he's cut my shot off. Chris, if you'd taken it the other way round, I would have been much better off because, you know, you can still get the full height of the building in just by pulling back a bit or zooming out with your camera. But it would have given us the end of that story, if you like, and we could have found out what happened. But let's not worry about that now. 
that's a good outside shot but let's have a look okay that was a damp inside now what Chris has done is he's done some investigation here and he's taken away some of the plaster and you can see the lintel the boot lintel which is holding the block work and then you can see the plaster ball there so he's exposed quite a lot really quite a brave man you can see where he's taken away this whole line of plaster to expose what's going on below it's a little bit baffling to me because okay we think this is the internal skin on a steel beam and this is the external skin and that looks to me like a bit of oh no maybe that's insulation it's hard to tell from that picture exactly where that steel lintel is lying you wouldn't expect the steel lintel to be lying on top of the window frame it should be on the outer skin of that cavity wall but whatever the case is he's taken enough plaster away there to have a look at what's going on and I would suggest that now you've done that Chris you might as well go the whole hog you might as well cut it back because what you want to do now it, it rather than patching that up you need to put a whole new sheet of plasterboard in all the way across and that can be plastered up you'll have to take those blinds down unfortunately to do the job properly but if you do that you can rip that bit down you can have a look and see where that water's coming in and maybe get yourself a hose pipe maybe get somebody to squirt the you know the hose pipe on the on the tiles and just just search it out and find it if it's coming in from that point i'm talking about which is where it the flashing lifts up then you'll soon see it dripping down inside but i think at this point there is no point in doing any more guesswork you, you've gone so far now that you must be able to find out exactly where that water is coming in let's just go back a bit let's go back to this outside because if there's any water coming in here down this brickwork in the driving rain and it's getting in and it's getting inside the cavity then it should be going to the outside who knows who knows how well that was done now what you can do i keep saying this but you can use a coat of storm dryer over this brickwork and it won't show once it's dry but it will waterproof the brickwork it won't stop it breathing so you don't have to worry about that but what it will do is repel the water and especially on these little bits where you've got a bit of dodgy pointing maybe it would be a good idea to put that in but as I said at the beginning I think that this is some kind of repair job so I think that before they sold you the house Chris they knew there was a problem here and they tried to get it fixed and unfortunately they didn't manage it there's a funny bit here actually what's happened here is that's not patination oil that is silicone whether somebody's been up here already and treated this brickwork with something like Granger's or Thompson silicon and um, that's what we can see running down there it stained the lead work so yeah that's a, that's a strong possibility there anyway I'd love to know what you think builders roofers plumbers anybody that's interested in lead work and anybody who's interested in finding leaks there's a little bit more work to do there my friend but i think you're almost there i don't see it being expensive that's the good news i'm roger bisbee come back and see me soon i'll have another video for you because we've got loads and loads coming into the ask skill builder help desk and not surprisingly this time of year with all the rain we've been having it's quite a lot of leaking roofs leaking gutters and things like that